Today we're going to take a look how we can create a Power BI application so that you can bring multiple dashboards and reports into one place for your users so that they don't have to search and go from dashboard to dashboard or from report to report. And also we're going to take a look at how you can embed this Power BI application in Microsoft Teams and in SharePoint site. Stick around, give it a thumbs up if you like the video and make sure to subscribe. Hi, welcome back. So I imagine you are already familiar with this uh, SharePoint list and this data by now, if you've been seeing the previous videos. And this is the dashboard where we created the bookmarks. As you can see here, you can use them to switch from uh, view to view and so on and so forth. But how do we bring this beautiful Power BI dashboard into another place uh, except of the Power BI web service, like for example, Microsoft Teams or um, a SharePoint list. That's what we're going to see today. And um, we are going to create a Power BI app, so-called Power BI application. It's not an app, it's more of um, yeah, a place where you can bring multiple Power BI reports so that your users do not have to go from report to report in different places. If the reports are similar or relevant to each other, then you can bring them together in one Power BI app. And um, yeah, uh, it's just for a better user experience. So let's do that and then see how we can embed that Power BI application on the um, places I mentioned. So first of all, uh, you cannot create a Power BI application if you are using the data in your default workspace. So usually the create an app option shows up here on the right hand side of the corner below your picture. So as you can see here, it's missing. And the reason for that is because I only have one workspace here, which is my default workspace. So let's go on and create a workspace. I will name it um, demo space and I will save it. So now, as you can see here, we have the option to create an app but I don't have data in this workspace. So I, if I select it, it will prompt me the issue needs some content, which means you don't have any data. So for that, I will go to Power BI Desktop. And if you remember, this is the report we created on the last video. I will publish it now in the demo space I just created, not in my default workspace. Okay, it looks like it worked. Let's close that. And as you can see here already in the demo space workspace we just created, we have that Power BI demo report we created last time. So this one. So now if we select create an app, it will prompt us with the settings and options that we can configure. And to do that, you have to put an app name. Um, it copies the name of the workspace, but you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it now demo Power BI app. And uh, it needs a, a summary description. I will just paste the name since I'm lazy. And uh, you can change the logo and the app theme and so on. I will stick with that blue since I like it. And uh, here's our, some, here's some uh, contact information you can configure, show app publisher, show items, contacts from the workspace, show specific individuals or groups and so on. We're not going to touch that. Navigation is the next uh, setting. And here you can bring your multiple uh, Power BI reports and have that application-like uh, feeling where we can switch from, from, from Power BI report to Power BI report in the same space, which is very um, nice actually and uh, makes it uh, a lot easier to navigate through reports. And last but not least, permissions, which is very important. You can uh, give access to the entire organization or specific individuals or groups. And here's also some more uh, settings and information that you should read. But uh, I will not um, spend time with that and I will go on and publish the app. It takes, it will take up to five or 10 minutes. That's, that's okay, publish. And um, here it prompts you with the Power BI um, application URL, which you can, of course, open in a web. Let's go to the app and take a look how it looks like. And as you can see here, you can hide the pages. This is the first page we have in our report. 
This is the second one where we also created the, the bookmarks. And if you switch to data A, data B, which again does not make sense how I did it, but it's just for showing you how bookmarks work. And that's what you should learn. Yeah, so as you can see, this is our um, Power BI application. So what we can do now is we can share it with people. And how you can share it is you can either generate a QR code where people can scan it with their phones and then they will be uh, redirected to this um, report on the web. Or you can embed the report in different places like SharePoint Online. And let's do that, select it. Now it will give us the embed URI, which is the one you need. You cannot just use the URL here. You need this report embed, blah, 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 uh, long string. So make sure that you copy that. And um, let's take a look how we can put it in our SharePoint site. So back to our uh, SharePoint site, if you go to home or any other page uh, you've created in SharePoint, it says new, you can create a new page and so on, but you can edit the one, uh, it comes as a standard with uh, SharePoint when you create a new team in Teams. So for that, um, you can you can get rid of all these uh, default settings here or uh, what items, but we're not going to do that. Here at the bottom, you can select plus, and here you can choose Power BI, and it will create a new tile here at the bottom, and you can select add a report. It will ask for the report link, paste that you, the, the one you just copied, and if you click somewhere else, it will load the report already in your uh, SharePoint site. And as you can see, there it is. Now it will, it will also ask you which page you want to show first. And we are going to go with page number two um, because I like the uh, book, bookmarks uh, report I created. So I want the user to be um, yeah, redirected at this page as soon as they go to this SharePoint site. Next, also, you can uh, change the display. I'm going to stick with 16 by 9 since this is a white um, canvas and it looks better with this uh, ratio. Next, it will ask you also if you want to show the navigation pane, which is this here at the bottom, and the filter pane. I don't want to show the filter pane, but you can do that if you need the uh, users to be able to filter here. Since I don't have any filters in the filter pane, I will turn that off. And I will also turn the navigation pane off. Now the user can only go to these three places, which it's not very useful. But if you have created bookmarks for all your pages, you don't need the navigation pane anymore because the user can navigate using bookmarks, which is much cooler. But anyways, that's how you can bring your report in a SharePoint site. Uh, don't forget to select republish. I've already published it once. That's why it asks to republish. First time it was just say publish. And here it is. It looks, um, I think it looks really good because it's uh, like without a frame. It's, it's, it looks like it's floating in this SharePoint site. And you can interact with it. You can uh, use the bookmarks here. You can um, see the data that's underneath. You can even filter, which is cool, right? It's exactly that, like you would use it in um, the Power BI service or in Power BI desktop. Next, I want to show you how to embed that Power BI application that we just created in Teams. So there is multiple ways how you can do that. For example, you can put it in a channel. Uh, the way how you can do that is to select the plus button next to the um, channel name. And here, if you select Power BI, it will bring you the Power BI um, workspaces or applications that you have. So for example, if you select apps, this is our application, select that and select save. Now this will create a new tab in your channel with um, the Power BI report application that we just created. And it looks exactly like uh, in, in the SharePoint site. Only here you cannot hide the bottom part of the report so that the user will always see these tabs at the bottom. But it works fine. You can use the bookmarks like in the Power BI service and in SharePoint we just saw. You can filter the data. You can see the, um, the tooltip and the data underneath these bars, for example, and so on and so forth, which, which looks great. 
Another great option, how you can embed a Power BI report in Teams so that you don't have it um, in a specific uh, team or channel. Uh, you can select on the left-hand side the ellipsis here and search for Power BI. In my case, it's already there. So if I select Power BI, this will um, prompt me with the same user experience I have in Power BI web service. And from here, I can also search for the application we just created. And there it is. I can navigate to it and... Yeah, I have the same experience here like in uh, the web page or in the SharePoint site. If you select now something different and select Teams, for example, that Power BI application will go away. So to make it stay, make sure that you select that again. And as soon as you are where you want to be, for example, in my case, in my Power BI application, right click and pin it. This will make sure that it will always stay there. And if I select Teams now, you see the Power BI application stays uh, fixed in my left-hand side uh, navigation pane. Let's select it again. It will bring me to my workspace. So that's it with this uh, short video for today. I hope this could help and that you liked it. If you did so, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And uh, make sure to subscribe and that you follow the channel because there's more Power BI videos coming. Cheers, take care.